Final one. An acrobat of mass m equals 55 kilograms swings from a trapeze of length 15 meters, starts at rest, and descends 5 meters during the swing. But the trapeze rope has been sabotaged by an evil villain, and it will snap at 800 newtons of tension. Will our acrobat make it across safely? This is a question that is important for his life. All right, so if it's going to snap, where, it must, where, where will be the point that it would, it, it would experience the most tension? When is the most tension going to happen? If we're able to figure out if it's going to not snap at the point of experiencing the most tension, then we know we'll make it across safely because the entire time the swing occurs, the acrobat is able to swing across without having to worry about the tension overgoing. Well, he doesn't even know. We'll not have to worry about it snapping it because if, if the tension is maximum at one point, then we know that if we can figure out that one point's maximum tension, it will tell us whether or not it snaps because everything is going to be at least less than that. Sorry. So if everything is less than that, all we have to figure out is what the maximum tension put on it is. Where will the maximum tension occur? So now we have to think back, where do we have to get tension from? The tension has to keep it in a circle. So the tension is going to be connected to keeping it in a circle. So force centripetal, for it to be able to go in a circle, which is what the acrobat goes through, force centripetal is equal to the mass times v squared over r. Once again, I'm using v as speed, being lazy. So m times v squared over r. All right, so at what point will the will he be traveling fastest? At what point on the circle will the, will the acrobat be traveling fastest? Well, it's going to be the point where he's converted all of his motion, all of his uh, initial gravitational potential into motion, which is going to be the lowest point on the circle. That's going to have the largest V. So the largest V occurs at the bottom. Also, the largest V is when there's going to be the most fight between the tension of the rope and the gravity pulling him down. So mg is going to be pulling down and the rope is going to have to also is going to have to give the centripetal force necessary to keep it in the circle and also beat the gravity force that's trying to pull him down. So those two things combined will cause the tension to be highest at the very bottom. So that's the point we have to look at. All right. So we know that the energy initial plus the work equals the energy at the end. So the moment we want to look at, our snapshot is going to be the moment of most tension. That's the point we want to check at and figure out if he's going to survive. And, well, yeah. So if he's going to survive, we need to look at that moment of maximum tension. So we're going to make that ending snapshot be when it's pointing directly down. So energy initial, is there any work that occurs? No, there's no friction, nothing happens, it's just a clean, smooth pivot. So all of the energy initial is going to be transferred into energy at the end. So energy initial is mgh is equal to one half mv squared. Our m's cancel out, so we don't have to worry about the mass for that. So gh equals one half mv squared, so we've got the square root of two gh equals v. We plug in our numbers and we get that the v, and this is on the bottom, v at the bottom is equal to 9.9 .9 meters per second. So that's how fast our acrobat would be traveling if the rope were definitely safe. So that's going to be, because remember, if, if the rope snaps, it will snap somewhere between here and here. After this, it winds up being safe. So all we have to do is test the most extreme point, and we'll be able to figure out if it snaps before it gets to the bottom. If the bottom tension is greater than 800 newtons. We know the rope snaps somewhere on the way to getting to the most extreme tension. We don't know precisely where yet. We could figure it out, but that'd be a more difficult question. All right, so we know that the V bottom is equal to 9.9 .9 meters per second. What's the centripetal force necessary to keep him in a circle? That's what has to be on the acrobat in that. Force centripetal is equal to mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. Well, what's the radius? What's the mass? We know all these things. 55 kilograms times 9.9 .9 squared over 15 meters. 
We plug that into a calculator and we get 359 newtons is the necessary force, the necessary centripetal force, the necessary sum of forces to be able to keep him in that circle. So 359 newtons. So the centripetal force is pulling this way, right? So we've got tension is pulling this way and it has to also be able to be sum of mg. So we know that tension minus mg equals 359 newtons, equals that centripetal force. So tension equals 359 plus mg at the moment of maximum tension that that rope would experience if it were a safe, healthy rope. Remember, if it's not a safe, healthy rope, it might snap before we even get there. So the actual rope might not ever experience that tension because the most it's going to experience is 800 newtons before it snaps. We don't know if he'll make it yet. We've got to finish this problem. All right, 359 plus mg, 359, we start plugging in our numbers, 359 newtons plus 55 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second per second. We plug it into our calculator, and what does it come out? It comes out to, oh no, 898 newtons, snap. He doesn't make it. But on the bright side, there's a net underneath it. Let's draw in a net. The net catches him, and he works later, and he finds the villain who's, a, who's responsible for it, and he puts him to justice. All right, great. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you come back, and we'll learn about more about energy and have an even stronger understanding of how energy works. Thanks.